to one of her favourite players in Nat Von Berto, the captain of the Australian team. So Natalie Von Berto to get us underway here at the Dome in Adelaide. First pass from oh. Green and there's McCoy already. We mentioned her in the pre-game and she's getting involved straight away. The first turnover goes the way of England. You know, McClymer is going to be a hugely influential player in this match. You can see from the start, but Bianca Chatfield in reply, nice and steady. She's growing in stature with every game. Sat on the bench for a few years, but now every time she gets out on the court, she's determined to show Norma Plummer that she deserves to be there and wants to stay there. Contact call going against McClymer. And a rare miss from Natalie Medhurst. She shoots at 91% for Australia. Extraordinary stat that. 89 of her 98 attempts coming into tonight's game she has made. But an early miss for her tonight. Yeah, it actually took her nearly three test matches to get a miss on the board, which is impressive and just shows how cool and calm she is, making her debut against Jamaica and then playing against New Zealand late last year. But the turnover that we just saw was as a result of Jeeva Mentor just getting really hanging over the shot, and I reckon we'll see plenty of that from England tonight. Nice pass from Greenway to Dunn. Oh, bad luck, Bianca Chatfield. Timing was perfect, just hit the ball out of Dunn's, or one of the was still in Dunn's hands, which is why she gave away possession. Sue Hawkins singled Rachel Dunn out as the player she wants to lift from, and she's got the first goal for England. She also spoke about Greenway delivering the ball to the circle, and we saw a great front cut then from her, just passed off and then drove onto the top of the circle, which is the best place to feed from. Well, Rachel Dunn, she's done a knee injury before and she's gone down holding a knee and let's hopefully hope that she's holding her ankle, which uh, is not good, but better than the alternative path that I was going down, which was a knee injury. So. Yeah, you're, when a player goes down, you always look for exactly what they're grabbing onto. She fell awkwardly then, landed, looked to me like it was on top of Bianca Chatfield. I was, was about to say that the English shooters have put on a great movement to get there. So she follows through in the rebounding. Yeah, just turned it on Bianca Chatfield's foot. So that's an awkward thing to do when all your body weight's going in that direction. But I was about to say the England shooters had opened well. They set up a nice screen using each other, using the height and the bulk of both Dunn and Brownfield just to create that space along the baseline. So the Australian defenders need to keep talking to get past that. What's the move uh, if uh, Rachel Dunn can't uh, continue on? Who do they bring on now? Liz looks like she's going to hobble off the court. So she's thinking about continuing on. What do they do? Do they put um, Greenway back into the goal attack position? I think you'd move Brownfield back and Greenway into goal attack. And look at Joe Bins in wing attack. She did a great job Saturday night when she came on at half time. But Dunn's testing out that foot. They've only got two minutes to make this decision. So. And to add insult to injury, she's uh, out of play and is being advanced for the delay. Started off no different. Three or nearly three minutes into the match, and only two goals scored. Cheryl McMahon's joining us uh, courtside. Uh, it's two goals to one in favour of Australia. How are you seeing things, Cheryl? It's been a really defensive start to this game, actually, with the first two goals being sto uh, scored off the turnover. So I think that that's something that'll continue. We saw it in the first test, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it'll be the same tonight. from Brownfield. The pass from Greenway was fantastic again. That was a great chase down from Nat Medhurst. And they're the little things that can get your team going and get them pumping, just pouncing on a loose ball, being prepared to put your body in there and not worry about the consequences. And Nat Medhurst is fast enough to do that. 
You see England just setting up a little zone defence around the top of the circle. Clark and Atkinson just cutting off that access to the circle, which tries to trick the feeders into putting the ball up loopy into the pockets. And that allows McClomer and Mentor to have a go. But the Australian's nice and direct then on the leagues. And the long bomb from Natalie Medhurst. This is uh, her home city. She plays for the Adelaide Thunderbirds, so I'm assuming a fair amount of her family will be here tonight. Jeeva Mentor, the English goalkeeper, also plays for the Adelaide Thunderbirds and regards it as her second home, so she'll be hoping for a little bit of crowd support. It's a great challenge then from Nat Bomberto. Got up and very nearly created the turnover. It's much more the style of shooting that we saw from Louisa Bramfield on Saturday night. She's got a really nice, relaxed shooting style, and she was confident then. She approached the post and slid it through nicely. Well, the bounce pass from Green nearly came unstuck, but Susan Prattley good enough to pick it up. Now we see Prattley again just trying to balk, getting McClomer out of the way. It's become a feature of Prattley's shooting style, just to balk to get rid of the defender. And she'll be doing plenty of that tonight. McClomer and Mentor incredibly long arms. Oh, I would have called that the other way. That looked like it went off Atkinson's hands. The umpires will often give the benefit of the doubt to the attacking team in that situation. And England a little bit lucky then. Unlucky there, though. Brownfield set up a really nice screen for Dunn. And in running off it, she just must, she pushed off. It's a really big play for Australia now. They've got a three-goal margin if they can convert this turnover out to four goals. Not what England would want. No, but we did see Saturday night. Oh, that's a great pass then from Prattley through to Medhurst. And that's what Norma Plum will be looking for, having the shorter, faster players out there. It was an air ball then. <laughs> I don't know if that comes up into the stats. Now, Prattley took that throw in really quickly. And Mandy Nottingham has called her for not setting the throw in correctly. Oh, well done, Monia Gerard. That turnover was created by the pressure that Nat Von Berto put on Atkinson on the take. There's the rebounding strength that you mentioned in the pre-game. Mentor and McClymer have got a height advantage over Prattley and also Medhurst. They've got a massive height advantage of almost 10 centimetres each. So Australia won't pick up a lot of offensive rebounds tonight, but what they will do is put a lot of goals through. So Norma McClymer will be hoping that in selecting the shorter players, they'll do the job. It's interesting, Rachel Dunn. Even though she drew that penalty from Bianca Chatfield, put the ball down and let Brownfield shoot, that to me suggests that Brownfield is the more confident on strike of the shooters. I think it might be a blood uh, rule here against Rachel Dunn, so she's uh, been involved early, rolled her ankle and... <laughs> she's in the wars. Now this is an interesting situation. This is an umpire called timeout, so the substitution doesn't have to be made. If Rachel Dunn had to call the timeout, she would have had to have been substituted. The frustrating thing for a lot of coaches during these or during any timeout is that they're not allowed anymore to approach their players to provide any coaching. I know that Norma Plummer, the Australian coach, finds that frustrating. Let's have a look at this uh, interception in the first quarter from Monia Gerard. It's a trademark of hers, Liz, isn't it? It is just flying through the centre, but Nat Von Berto created that intercept by putting plenty of pressure on Karen Atkinson in taking the ball. It looked to me like the English backline throw in there, they weren't really sure what to do. McClymer and Clark created an overload on one side of the court. Atkinson came up the other side. That is often a practice move, but it just didn't come quite quick enough. And Jeeva Mentor looked like she wasn't quite sure who to deliver the ball to. Cheryl McMahon's courtside. Watch it now. Rachel Dunn getting some treatment on that bloody knee, but the battle between her and Bianca Chatfield is already an enthralling one. There's been a couple of calls from the umpire that have gone both ways, and um, that real holding game uh, will be something to look out for from Rachel Dunn and to see if Bianca Chatfield can get around and get up to those high balls going in. Natalie Von has got the ball. She's going to get underway, but we've still got the trainer doing some work on Rachel Dunn. How does she look on her feet, uh, uh, Sherelle? We know that she rolled her ankle. She seems to be moving okay. 
I think she she looks like she's moving okay, but um, it, as I said, one of her strengths is that real holding game, which you know you really need to be hold, be able to hold your feet and not be moved. And I can tell you from training on Bianca Chatfield a lot, she can really move you as a player. So you do have to hold that space really strongly if that's the style you're going for. Vantage break. not wanting to shoot over the arms of McClomer. And that's why it's a great little crumb there from Medhurst. And that's what she's good at, just waiting back. Could almost be a tactic of theirs for one player to go up and contest the rebound and the other one to wait for the crumbs to come. Yeah, that was a great contest there from Rebecca Bully. Just put Brownfield off being able to sight the ball. I see both teams really committing to a one-on-one -on -one style of defence down the court. And again, Rebecca Bully getting a hand in, not forcing the turnover. Yeah, Bully and Chatfield are really mixing it up well in that circle, and Gerard coming up with a great intercept on the edge of the circle. Careful not to go offside, and as you would expect from her, rebounds the ball into attack. Oh, that was an unlucky call. Jade Clark. Moved her feet beautifully then around. Sometimes think the umpires could let a little more go. Although they'd both be keen to establish their authority early. It's a great shot from Medhurst. She just waited for McCloma to fall away. So Kim Green in just taking... Just in the right-hand corner of your screen. We're just having a look at that replay while the play is underway. Natalie Medhurst there picking up. The spill, as you uh, described beautifully, four goal margin to Australia. I was about to say, Kim Green just took that centre pass. That was her third centre pass take of this match. She's really commanding that transverse line, and she's the go to girl for the Aussies off that centre pass. For England, it's Greenway, as you'd expect for the wing attacks. Well, another turnover from Rachel Dunn. She's thrown a few balls that the Australians have been able to get a hand on. That one just went right out of court, so it's a big play. They're five goals down England, and the intensity from the Australians just seems to be at another level from what it was four days ago in Newcastle. Yeah, it has, and they're not making the turnover errors that, that England are at the moment. This is worrying times, though, with five minutes to go in the first quarter. England don't want to get out to more than a five-goal margin away from Australia. They were able to protect that margin and claw it back in the first test. But Australia the sort of team, if they get on a roll, they'll make you pay. Moni Gerard picking up another fine intercept. That's three intercepts for her, which is an impressive stat for a full game, let alone in the first quarter. That's a great pick off them from Jeeva Mentor. Mentor and McClomer have turned the ball over a couple of times in the last minute, and that's what England need. They need these two to stand up and give them plenty of possession. Just see the pressure from Australia in the midcourt part again. Well, Rachel Dunn, that one fortunately landed to Brownfield. Probably more good luck than uh, good design. And it was important because uh, it has bridged the gap back to four goals with under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah, and what a low-scoring game, 8-4. 12 goals in the first 10 minutes is really unusual. Just shows how committed both defensive units from these teams are. Deflections there. Diamonds in England, five and four, pretty close. You would expect that in a defensive style of the game. And the English, the long arms of Jeeva Mentor and Sonia McClellan, we see Mentor doing the same again. Skiing their hands to lots of tips. But the key for England will be how hard they chase it up. Australia have chased up the crumb balls much better in the early parts of this game. into a scoring position. And that turnover rate, England six, the Diamonds three, so England twice expensive with the ball. And two of those six turnovers for England have come through the hands of Rachel Dunn. So perhaps she's not standing up as much as 
Sue Hawkins, her coach, would have liked it to early in this game. She's only shooting at 50%. There's the fake again that you mentioned. And Prattley drew the intimidation call. Five goal margin again. Yeah, it's a bit of a dangerous sort of play. Look at those shooting percentages. 71 apiece from both teams. That's low in international netball, particularly with the Australians. They pride themselves on shooting over 80%. They're not close to that. Important offensive rebound to Rachel Dunn. She's had uh, a mixed first quarter. Yes, yeah, she has shooting at 67%, but her shooting partner, Louisa Brownfield, isn't shooting that much better. England are in chase position at the moment. If they can maintain or start to whittle away at this four-point difference, they'll go into the first quarter break with a fair bit of confidence, but I reckon they'll want to just move it down, get the margin to two or three if they can. It's a nice little confidence boost going into the second quarter if they can do that. With that shot in the centre pass, they are likely. So a big momentum switch here for England. Mentor and McClyman, we speak a lot about them, but I feel that they've really kept England in this first quarter. If it hadn't been for them, it might have been a bigger margin. Yeah, you're right, Luke. And that defensive line is the reason why the Australians are only sitting at 10 goals. That's a, a low score for the Diamonds for a quarter. Dunn and Brownfield have just started to come into this game. Not only their shooting, but also the movement. Brownfield in particular, she's tall, which probably means that she doesn't have the same speed as uh, Nat Medhurst or the Australian goal attack would have. So it, that's where England have struggled in bringing the ball through that trans or over that transverse line into attack. Big clash of bodies there outside the uh, the goal and circle, but the call has come back to Prattley. Yeah, Manny Nottingham really does give the benefit of the doubt to the attackers. I thought Mentor had a really good go at that ball then with Prattley and was unlucky not to just let the play go on. dangerous approach to the shooting circle for England and Dunn just didn't look confident on that and I don't think she looks particularly confident on a shot whereas Brownfield looks like she wants to go to the post. Oh well done Sonia McClomer. She came off. Nat Medhurst just had a go at that. It's a great thing for a goal defence to be able to do to set an intercept and have a go for it. Australians are really pinpoint accurate in their passing around the edge of that circle. And they have to be. There is pressure on absolutely every pass. Now, this is worrying for England. That's cool. The four goal margin. Both teams look like they were trying to feel each other out in the first quarter then. England could be pleased that they kept the impression that they're both so accurate from the long shots. Susan Prattley in particular has taken most of her shots in close to the post. But when she's taken them out long, she's accurate. And that's what the English team are lacking at the moment. Their long shots just aren't popping in. First centre pass was with Australia. Well, interesting, Sue Hawkins has made some changes that we thought would come, Luke, and Tamsin Greenway moved across to goal attack. Atkinson back to wing attack. Joe Bin's on at centre. Brownfield, the most accurate of the English shooters and the most relaxed looking sitting back at goal shooter. So, no change in the back line for England, but all the changes up front. Oh, that's great ball movement then. Great vision then from Kim Green. Just to find Sue Prattley behind all that and deserve to be finished. Prattley will no doubt be unhappy about that, but she'll get the chance to make that up. Great play from Jade Clark there. It was a fantastic ball. Yeah, and that's a great take then from Brownfield. That's where her strength is. She's 
able to hold and able to get up with both hands and pull the ball in. And that's what England need. They need for someone to stand up and just take control of that front line. That's a footwork call against Kim Green. So this is a pretty crucial turnover for England, sitting at four goals behind. They just need to start to score off their turnovers. Their defensive unit is working really hard, getting the hold of the ball, but this is where they lose it, just across this transverse line. It's a much better approach to the circle. Ackerson prepared to deliver the ball into Greenway. And it's no surprise, she turned and looked straight onto Brownfield. This is a more confident looking England front line. Joe Benz to take the centre pass. She came on in the second quarter in Newcastle and played really well. Cheryl McMahon's with us courtside. Yeah, just trying to have a little bit of a listen to Coach Norma Palmer at quarter time. She spoke a lot about the rotations in the Aussie shooting circle, which is obviously one of the strengths with the movement of uh, Nat Medhurst and Susan Prattley down there. Interesting to see now what we'll see in the English shooting circle with this a little bit more movement, and it's actually working quite well for them so far. In terms of Greenway's just taken the last two shots there, and both times a step back, and both times the shot's fallen short. So I'd actually like to see her just stand and deliver and just be prepared to go through with the shooting motion. And again, another turnover created by the intensity of the English defence. They are the backbone of this team. Nice take from Joe Binns there. The pass from Mentor had a fair bit on it. And Greenway. Oh! <laughs> Monica Gerard. <Gerard's. laughs> she, uh, not an apology, just a laugh as she just poleaxed her into the ground. Yeah, take that. It's another turnover. And Luke, England are shooting at 63%. That's incredibly low. They're doing well to only be three goals down. Probably helped by the fact that the Australian shooting line is sitting at 72%. Oh, nice take from Rebecca Bully. It was a 50-50 ball. It was, but it's one of the tactics of the Australian team to go back just to reset up their attack. You saw Nat Von Berto looked in the circle, nothing on, go back. Set it all up again. Just going straight to the post. This is where her movement's lethal along that back line. Her timing is outstanding, but she's given away her ball, and that comes through just probably one too many balks on the shot. So it gives England another chance to pull back this deficit. They just will not lay down. Oh, another footwork call. pressure the Australian girls have put on the mid-court has been immense. We've seen so many turnovers for England in that middle part of the court. You hear the talking there from the Australian girls. They're really trying to work each other into the game. And Monica, uh, Karen Atkinson equate themselves. That's like typical of the way Monia Gerard plays. No prisoners. Give it all. And if you take someone out, that's just how it goes. She really seemed to enjoy that, Monica <laughs> Gerard. Well, her brother's a rugby union player, and uh, I reckon he, even he might be proud of that tackle. Oh, great rebound there, Rebecca Bully. She was out of position, but came all the way over Greenway to get hold of the ball. This is worrying for England. Five goals down and possession to Australia. Let's see what their back line can do. Apparently's run the same move the last three or four times down the court, just running around the back of Mentor and making her try and find her on the baseline and she's exploiting her speed through that movement. Now shot 11 goals from her 14 attempts, Susan Prattley at 79%. 
Much better ball movement from England. Nice direct route to the circle. Brownfield nice and strong. It's a great shot from Brownfield under pressure. She needed to nail that. There's still six goals down and England will need to get a little move on the second half of this second quarter. They want to stay in touch with the Diamonds. Cheryl McMahon. We are, we are seeing a great job here by the Aussies. I think feel as though tonight, more so than the other night, they're just being a little bit more measured. They're waiting for the spaces to open up. And I think that that combination with um, Sue Prattley and Nat Medhurst in that circle is allowing that to happen. The movement's coming and generally things are opening up for them. So it's really pleasing to see that they're keeping that ball under control. And it's no surprise that Sonia McCloma coming up with the turnover ball again. That's oh, a great pass in from Vins. Oh, deserved to be finished. Good chase then from Greenway, but Monty Gerard ever present on the edge of the circle. That seems to be, to be where England are falling down. Greenway is a great ball mover. Feeding the ball well to Brownfield, but she needs to be able to stand up and shoot. She's not doing that for England at the moment. Sitting at 25%, one goal from four attempts. And England overall is shooting at 58%. You wouldn't think they're going to be anything like competitive if they continue to shoot at that sort of percentage. It's now out to a seven goal margin. England had the centre pass, but it's got blowout written all over it unless they can get themselves back into this contest. Just under seven minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, and they've got great ball movement, which is allowing them to do that. Like that from Bin, that's a much better approach. That option created when Bianca Chatfield went flying for the ball and created a two-on-one overlap in the circle. With six minutes to go, England need to start to pull back this six-goal margin or else it will become worrying. We know that there's notable absentees from both sides. Cheryl McMahon would love to be out there. She's sitting with us courtside. Catherine Cox isn't playing for Australia. But England have Pamela Cookie out who would be a great missing link for them, wouldn't they, at, uh, at the goal attack position. Yeah, and her ability to create play as well as slot goals would be absolutely crucial here for England. And another turnover from that back line. And you wonder how often McClymer and Mentor can continue to turn the ball over. They need a little bit of reward from their teammates at the other end of the court. That's better from Brownfield. When the ball gets delivered to her within that shooting distance, she doesn't muck it up. The right idea from Greenway. Brownfield had actually held really nice space on the right-hand side. Just delivery wasn't quite there. It's not a bad way to mix up that approach. Great ball movement from Nat Medhurst. A really good combination going, but again, it's McClover's arms, or Me Mentor's arms over the shot that draw the held ball. This is unusual to have this many held balls in a game, and it's really due to that defensive pressure over the shot from McClover and Mentor. England need to score off this turnover. Just use it to catapult themselves into the last five minutes of this quarter. Brownfield got herself caught between Chatfield and the post then, which is not a great place to be, but managed to get herself out of it. It was a risky pass in, but again, her strength was a telling factor. In that take, and that's a great shot, just allows him to pull back. She shot nine from 12, Louisa Brownfield. It seems to be a key to England. If they can get the ball in her hands as often as possible, she seems the most likely to deliver for them. Yeah, and within shooting range, that's crucial. She's not a real long shot specialist. <laughs> Mentor not happy with that call. Her and Prattley just getting into a little bit of push and shove. 
Bentley's really started to muscle up on her opponents in the last few years, and it's a side of her game that's really starting to mature, that ability to get into a physical tussle and come out on top and not let it affect what she's doing. And another costly turnover for England. Oh, untouched over a third was the call. Kimberly Green wanted to argue it, and Bromham Meek says, take it up the court. Oh, great take from Brownfield. She had three Australian defenders bearing down on top of her. Took it well. I've been really impressed with just her strengths of the ball in this game, Luke. She's come into this game sitting at goal attacking it, but then when she came in to shoot her, she started to take some great passes. And an England ball, which is a big call for them because it was going to be a costly miss, came into this match with high expectations about England's chances. They only lost by three goals in Newcastle. Again, Greenway's shot comes up short. They just can't get close if they do that. Sherelle McMahon's courtside. What do you do at half-time if you're Sue Hawkins, the English coach? Does she make some moves or does she stick with the way they've lined up now? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Often in netball, it does take some time to settle in to the changes that are made. We actually saw, as Kim Green goes down with a bit of an ankle, hopefully that's all good. We did say quite a few changes at that quarter time break. I would potentially let that ride. The only place that I would look at making a change is perhaps in that goal attack position where Tamsin Greenway is still looking very shaky on the shot. Well, she is shaky, Sherelle. She's sitting at one from five at 20%. So you wonder where England would be if they could capitalise on these chances. They've had three less attempts in Australia, yet they're sitting five goals down. So probably a little fortunate that Australia aren't as accurate as they normally are tonight. And again, they've got an opportunity for a defensive rebound from McCloma. And they go all the way to the end of the court. Brownfield, you don't think, would possibly be able to miss from there. <laughs> and put the mocker on her. But what a game Sonia McCloma is having. She's had two centre pass received. So she's bringing the ball through the back line, the centre pass, two intercepts, and ten penalties. She's a real key to England's ability to perform or ability to claw back this deficit. to head towards Karen Ackerson, but she just kept her head up and was able to get her hands to it. And yeah, well done, Rebecca Bully again, although and it's bounced back her way. She debuted against the Silver Ferns about a week and a half ago in Christchurch, Rebecca Bully. Safe to say she looked a bit nervous, but tonight really seems as though she's come into her own. Yeah, she got a lot of ball back or a couple of nice pieces of ball back against New Zealand in a debut test, but looked a little nervous in attack. Tonight, though, she's looking confident. England have only got 20 seconds to get the ball down. This is where the Australian defence line will look to disrupt everything, perhaps give away an obstruction call just to slow things down. England, though, we're looking towards a couple of long passes into that front line, and that's another great take from Brownfield. You heard the crowd booing or groaning then. Looked like a short pass. Well, half time, England did well to only lose that quarter by one goal. Brownfield started to stand up. Uh, Cheryl McMahon very shortly, and she can uh, fill us in on all those changes. But the second half is underway. The Diamonds lead by five goals. Kate Beveridge has the ball. Lauren Nurse is one of those changes. She's come on. And now we'll go to Sherelle and she might talk us through some of the changes for both sides. Yeah, as we see there, Kate Beveridge has taken the court in goal shooter and Sue Prattley has moved out into the goal attack position, replacing Natalie Methurst. As Norma mentioned at that um, break in the interview, she was worried about the attack line and how that's working. So that's where we see the changes. Lauren Norse has also come onto the wing attack. As we suspected, we've actually got a change to the, the English goal attack position. Um, with um, Joe Hart, and Joe, coming on. yep, coming onto the into that position. So that was what we'd identified as a little bit of a weakness there for England. So it'll be interesting to see how that move works. Well, she's in fact the youngest player on court. So at 19 years of age, got six te test caps under her belt. It's a pretty big stage to come onto in a crucial match against Australia. shot from 
Hartley, she looked confident then and went straight to the post. Long ball from Brownford was good. Joe Hutton, as you mentioned, has come on to goal attack. She's 19 years of age, but there she is. She looks like she's about 14. <laughs> she looks uh, very young and very raw, but great opportunity for her. It is a great opportunity. And even though she missed that first shot, it's good to see her go to the post. She's a lefty, so it makes you change up your defensive positions. Rebecca Bully be thinking about where to get her hands up over the ball. It's in a different position to what she's used to. But... Yeah, Joe Hutton, she's young and she's built like a toothpick, so she'll have a work cut out for her tonight against the, just the sheer bulk and strength of Rebecca Bully and Bianca Chatfield. Oh, that's a great pick up from McClymer, and once again, she's proving absolutely vital this England lineup. There's Joe Hutton, that'll be fantastic for her confidence. The young girl who plays with the Mavericks in the English Super League. And a nice ball again from her, so. Great stuff from Sue Horgan. She's shown faith in a young girl. And that faith uh, in the first few minutes of this quarter looks like it's being rewarded. She's not afraid to deliver the ball, not afraid to go to the post. That's where they really, where England were really struggling in that first half. Great second effort from Bianca Chatfield, but just snuck in on that second jump during the whistle. <laughs> Seeing England creating that congestion again at the top of the circle, making it hard for the Australians just to, to find that direct route in that they really like. The mentor and beverage will be used to playing against each other. They do it every week at training for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. So, mentor having the early points. Read in the local paper today, Jeeva Mentor, very keen to stay on with Adelaide Thunderbirds for a second season. She loves it over here. Just finalising her contract negotiations at the moment. We're well, just going to put on a good performance tonight. Her coach at the Thunderbirds is Jane Woodlands, who's the assistant coach of the Australian team. Pretty sure the Thunderbirds would love to have her back. So England have clawed this back to a five-goal deficit, which is certainly gettable, but they need to start making some inroads into this, into the deficit early in the second half. 60% their shooting average throughout the match they're sitting on, which you've mentioned a few times, Liz, hard to be competitive uh, at international level shooting 60%. They've had a few people have a go at it. Rachel Dunn, Tamsin Greenway, and now Joanna Harton. Climber again picks up another possession, three rebounds, two intercepts, and great work from Gerard. Sort of get sick of saying that, but she's bringing it all out tonight. Just see the look of frustration on Sonia McClymer's face. They turned the ball over. As Tomberto hits the deck, she's fine. She's that was well done from Brownfield then, just got on with play with Bomberto at her feet. Sometimes it's tempting to look down and see if the play opposition play is all right, but there's no room for that at international level. Just get on with it, and that created a little bit of an overlap for them. Just mentioning McClymer and Mentor, they feel like they've played as good as they can, but the ball just keeps getting turned over and coming back, and sheer weight of numbers for Prattley. And another missed shot. Oh. Mandy Nottingham, I don't know where she saw Mentor gave away the contact. Mentor was standing, had front position on yes. Beveridge, and I thought, got the ball reasonably cleanly. Beveridge, though, the height, her height does give Australia a good... That pass from Joanna Bins from the centre pass, well, that sort of breaks your spirit a little bit, doesn't it, when you get a free possession and you virtually throw it straight into the crowd. Yeah, and Bins looked like she was just trying to get a nice, quick... Go off the centre pass to get into attack quickly, but you've got to balance that up against the fact that you need to be steady if you're pulling the ball back. Oh, great work again from Mentor. Over a third was the call there. And again, another turnover. Mentor chopped it off. She gets it to midcourt and it comes back <laughs> with interest.
And again, Mentor, oh, sensational well done. Fight. <laughs> that was superb. Just great balance over the line. You can see McClymer yelling at her team. Come on, come on. Oh, well done, Rebecca Bully. Just had her eyes up. Had no idea where the player was, but saw the ball. That's fantastic defence. She's showing Norma Plummer she wants to stay in this team. It seems to be the story of the night for England. They create a turnover and lose it almost as quickly. Rebecca Bully in only her second test match has had four rebounds and a couple of intercepts. One way to make sure that you stay on the court. Given away only three penalties, so she's been incredibly efficient. Great returns for not much whistle. It's a great hold then from Beveridge and well delivered from Lauren Nurse. Just putting the ball to the open side. Jeeva Mentor doing her best to intimidate Beveridge and lay all over and take a space, but. Oh, nice pass from Joe Harton. It's a much better approach. like a little England set play and they need those set plays to start to come off. This margin blowing out to seven is a worrying sign. Well done, Susan Proudly saw that McClomer's eyes were down and delivered a great short ball to Beveridge. Tide turning in Australia's favour midway through this third quarter. to the post being made difficult by some fantastic defensive work from Bully and Chatfield, forcing a number of long cross-court passes. Joe Harton puts an end to their misery. Nothing worse than defending, defending and defending and then just seeing the ball go through the ring and England need more of that. Call Manny Nottingham saying that Joe Binns was deliberately getting a hand over the ball, trying to slow play down, so it's moved it in. That's a little bit heartbreaking for England. They're now out to a nine goal deficit. So I should say an eight goal deficit. Maths was never a strong point. <laughs> Didn't like the challenge they got four days ago in Newcastle. Their intensity's come up. They seem uh, very determined to not allow England to get even close to them tonight. It's a seven goal margin, five minutes to go in the third term. Well, both teams have been playing this game, Luke, with one eye on the win, obviously, now, but also one eye on the future. And Australia don't, this team, this Diamonds team, don't want to be the first team in 28 years to give away that loss. And they've come here tonight with that in mind. England, though, potentially squandered a golden opportunity. Australia, a far less experienced team than them, a younger team than them, right for the taking, but plenty of, yeah, plenty of guts in this Australian team, and that probably really shows that all play, or three defensive players then running to pick up the crumbs. Sure, McMahon's courtside. That was another great turnover there by the Aussies. And the reason that England are finding it so hard to get that ball into the circle is that Chatfield and Bully are shutting everything down. And then Monia Gerard and Natalie Von Berto on the outside of the circle just shutting every move down from them. So it's just extremely tough. Wherever they look, they can only see gold. And um, it, it's forcing them to throw passes that, they, that are tough. Quick to get the ball down to this attacking transverse line. Well done, Monia Gerard. 
That was a great take that gives away the penalty. Joe Binns will know she's been in a contest tonight. <laughs> Bowled her over again. <laughs> and Moni Gerard has been told no more. Bring it in. Yep. And the penalty's been advanced for her troubles. Well, England not laying down, but they've got a lot of work to do. Moni Gerard marginally late, but just her strength through her shoulders and her arms coming through then ended up with the ball in hand. Never left any doubt as to her commitment. That was a nice approach then from Nat Von Berto, just bouncing the ball into space. Von Berto and Kimberly Green in particular have been instrumental tonight just in putting that ball into the circle, both of whom, well, Nat Von Berto has 10 goal assists, Kimberly Green, nine goal assists. Just outstanding at finding the space and putting the ball to it. Oh. Rebecca Bully did everything but catch that ball. Footwork was great. Joe Hart, shot from the baseline, rolls out. And Joe Beans gets one back. I think she's still in deficit. <laughs> tonight, Luke, about that shooting percentage of England sitting at 64%. Australia now has dropped down to 69% with that miss from Kate Beveridge. So not, stellar, not a stellar shooting performance from both teams. God, it's much better ball movement from England. A great finish there. But they need a lot more of it. Margin back to seven goals. And here's that little bounce pass that you like from Natalie Von Berto. It was really clever. It was. She found the space, but also delivered the ball into the right space via the floorboards. Just slowed it down, allowed it to sit up into Kate Beveridge. England have had two really good approaches down court. And it's this sort of play that allowed them to just pull back that deficit. Well, they've reduced the margin now to six goals. And we've got a timeout being called. So 52 seconds left on the clock, and it's a centre pass to England, so it just keeps the door open. If they could score and get it back to five goals, Sue Hawkins just rolling her eyes. She wants to get out and have a chat. <laughs> She'll get that chance in 52 seconds' time, but early in this quarter, I thought it was worrying for England. Momentum had shifted the way of the Diamonds, and they were... Diamonds were really starting to pull on the pressure through some great defensive play, like this play from Moni and Gerard, but also Rebecca Bully and Bianca Chatfield doing a fantastic job. But every time Bully and Chatfield do the work, Gerard is able to come up with the ball, and you can see she's just so physical, such a great presence. Only the second Test match uh, that we've done with Channel 10, but uh, Sherelle Whitman, you look at Moni and Gerard, and she seems to me to be the sort of teammate everyone loves. You want to play with her. She's hard, she's tough, she's aggressive, but she sort of does it all with a smile, Sherelle. I'm not sure that Sherelle picked that up, but I, the point I was making is she just seems to be a crowd favourite and looks like her teammates just love playing with her. Yeah, you do. And what you know with Moni, particularly when you're sitting back at defence, is that by the time the attack, you can go attack, wing attack, get back to the circle, they're exhausted after having to run through her. Yeah, we can, Sherelle. We're just talking about Moni Gerard on screen and just saying she's become, uh, well, she's my favourite. Looks like she's a teammate that everyone just loves to play with. She's doing a, a fantastic job tonight and uh, just having a little bit of a problem with her knee during that timeout, so hopefully it's nothing serious. She, as I said before, has been creating havoc around the edge of that circle and down court as well. She's taken some great intercepts and, and created some great drive for the Aussies. McClomer and Mentor turning the ball over in the defensive circle for England. They'd love to get this ball down and score and get it back to six goals. I'm sure they'll be aware there's not much time left. Yeah, six or five or six seconds is long enough to get to the circle, but England have to go directly there and 
just lift that ball in quickly. And Hutton rolls it in. And that is three-quarter time. Well, England have managed to keep the deficit to sit really efficiently. England, though, not quite letting up. They're not out of this game yet. Cheryl McMahon. No changes as we see to the Aussie lineup. Norma Plummer has decided to go with those changes from half time. Just a small change for the England side with uh, Atkinson and Finn swapping in their wing attack centre position. Long range shot from Joanna Harton. The 19 year old just rolled out. But again, it's McClomer involved. Yeah, McClomer's having a super game. She's not letting Monia Gerard overshadow her. Nat Bomberto doing a good job in defence. Trying to do a bit of lip reading there for Karen Atkinson. She's got the ball on the end of the finger, which uh, is never a lot of joy in that. It's worth noting that Sarah Bayman came onto the court just before the end of that third quarter as well at wing defence. She started to come into the game a little bit on Saturday night when she got the hang of the speed that the game was played at. So if she can slot into that position well and slot into the momentum or slot, slot into the speed really quickly, she'll do well. Oh. Oh. Nearly a turnover again. Yeah, and there is no easy access into this circle. You know, Sherelle talked about the hard work that Chatfield and Bully and Gerard are doing and Nat Von Berdai as well. There is not an easy pass to be taken by this English front line. And that's probably also affecting their shot, how hard they've got to work to get the ball down there. Jo Harton will be pleased to see that one go in. Her shooting stats are sitting at four from eight at 50%. She needs to inject herself a little more into that statistic. Sonia McClaman not liking the shove that she got then from Kate Beveridge, giving it back with interest. Oh, it's great take and great balance from Atkinson. She used her experience then, just took the time to balance rather than just throwing the ball back into court. Great opportunity then for England just to start to claw back at this deficit. And that miss could prove to be reasonably crucial. Could be just enough to break the hearts. Yeah, especially from Brownfield, who's shot 18 of 24 at 75%. She looks so reliable. Again, mentor, though, got a hand on it. Two English defenders have been great, but opportunity to get the back to within five goals. There's the shooting percentages. Australia at 70%, but England only 63%. Yeah, you go a long way to see an international between the number one and four team in the world where the shooting percentages were, were so low. And again, it's probably testament to just how hard both defence lines have worked. Could you envisage Australia being good enough to shoot only 70% and beat the Silver Ferns with? No, you've got to shoot more than... You've got to shoot really... At, at an accurate, accurate level, about 80% or more against the Silver Ferns, mainly because they are so incredibly accurate. Irene Van Dijk and Maria Tutayer are both incredibly accurate shooters, so you're not getting much back from them. You've got to be right on your shooting game. Norma Plummer will no doubt remind her shooters of that leading into the New Zealand Games at the end of October, start of November. And again, another miss. Diamond's currently sitting at 33, and their last few games against New Zealand on Saturday night against England, they haven't, had, they haven't been particularly high scoring. 43 on Saturday night, only 31 points earlier in the month against New Zealand. So they've been wanting to post a high score just to give them a little bit of confidence, and that'll give them confidence. Susan Prattley, the most accurate shooter on court at 82%, it's another one through. So Norma Plummer tonight trialled a few shoes. Natalie Medhurst started. Kate Beveridge's came on. Caitlin Bassett got a run in Newcastle four days ago, heading towards those two Silver Ferns games. Who, in your mind, has got uh, the front running for the other position? I think Susan Prattley looks like she's got one of them sewn up. Who's going to join her? Look, I think Prattley and Beveridge are the standout shooters at the moment for Australia. They seem to slot in really well. They've got a nice understanding with each other. I do like the Medhurst-Prattley combination. I think it's got... A lot of merit, and it's the sort of thing that Norma Plummer could just throw on just to mix things up. 
against defence lines, and a lot of defensive players are quite tall, so when you put on two little zippy players like that, it gives you something else to adjust to. At the moment, I think that Beveridge and Prattley are your two strike shooters. There's 10 minutes to go in this match, and it is an eight-goal lead to Australia. We built up a lot of England's chances tonight. Sue Hawkins, their coach, was very excited about the prospect of them perhaps beating Australia tonight. They don't want to get blown away, though, do they? They would undo their good work from four days ago. Yeah, and they've still got test matches against England to go next week, so they'll want to make sure that they have enough confidence to be able to take on the number two team in the world on their home turf. We mentioned earlier they pick up Pamela Cookie. As the ball gets brought in for almost a free shot for Susan Prattley, but... Yeah, you're right. England will not want to let this game blow out. It's good for your confidence to be able to chase back and chase back. Been speaking a lot about shooting percentages. Australia at 71%. Their injured captain is our courtside expert, Sherelle McMahon. Yeah, and you are talking a lot about the Aussie shooters down there. And I actually think that Sue Prattley has really come into this game in the goal attack position. I think she's much more comfortable there. And just finding the space really nicely, especially working around Kate Beveridge. Obviously, they'll be hoping to lift that shooting percentage in this last quarter. the things that she started to do on the, in the first test. Initially she got the run around from Kim Graham but when she started to come into it she started to pick up the ball and not only then did she pick up a great intercept but she delivered a great long pass into the circle. Joanna Harton there the 19 year old in only her seventh game. She shot five from 10 to 50 percent but I think Sue Hawkins would see her as a real player of the future. She hasn't looked out of her depth and again Another goal, so it's something uh, to build on there for the England side. Yeah, and she hasn't allowed herself to be pushed around. There's Bayman's intercept then, and she did well to keep her feet, draw the penalty and deliver the long ball in. Have you seen Lauren Nurse's game? Kimberly Green started the first half. She was MVP uh, in Newcastle. Lauren Nurse's performance? Yeah, Lauren's done a great job. She's had plenty of goal assists. She had five goal assists and centre pass received so she's injecting herself into the game. She provides a, a different sort of skill to Kimberly Green. Probably not quite as quick but really deceptive and has a great ball delivery and she's done that well. She's found a shoot as well and she's particularly been able to bring Kate Beveridge into the game and get her some great ball. It's great defensive work then from Australia and Using that word great and defence in the same sentence, but there's no getting away from it that this win has been built on some outstanding defensive work from Rebecca Bully and Bianca Chatfield. And again, she Bianca Chatfield in a two-on-one situation just used her feet just to put that feet off. But probably the most spectacular of the defenders has been Monia Gerard. Just lots of pickups, a great physical presence. The great thing about them all is they bring the ball down court so well, they take a lot of pressure off that attacking line. Claimant never leaves the umpires any doubt as to her thoughts. She's a great competitor. Susan Prattley now sitting at 81%. She's the most accurate shooter on court. After a bit of a nervous start, she's really found a range. Question without notice to Sherelle McMahon. Their current form, Australia. Do you think they can knock off the Silver Ferns uh, when they play them on the 26th of October? 
I absolutely think they can knock them off. I wouldn't think any other way. I'm sure that they will still want to improve on a few things that have been happening tonight. Although I will say that I'm still impressed with the Aussies' defence in particular. There's been a couple of times as England bring the ball down the court that they are just stuck on the baseline as the shooters and just being shut down around the circle as well. So I think that coach Norma Plummer will be really happy with, with that defensive pressure. And that's reflected in the fact that England have only scored 29 goals deep into the fourth quarter. It's impressive to keep a team to below 40. And they're doing that. Looks like they're going to do that. Great intercept again from the climber. England have never ever scored over 44 goals against Australia and it probably looks as though that might be the magical number with four and a half minutes to go. They are going to compete against the world's best. They need to get that scoring rate up probably over 45. Yeah, they do. They uh, had a great win over New Zealand last year in a test match and it looked like they were really ready to take on the top few teams in the world. Disappointed to come in fourth at the World Championships, but you know, where they really need to improve to be able to match with the top teams is their shooting accuracy, but also the volume of attempts that they get. I think their defensive line is absolutely world class. It's that shooting line and the delivery of the ball into the circle and the finishing off that really needs to step up for England to challenge Australia and the Silver Ferns. England reduced the margin back to eight goals. Where's Catherine? Cox at no, she's injured at the moment. What's her likelihood of playing in the next test against New Zealand? Yeah, she's pretty confident of being able to play. She's got a scan later in the week just to check out the injury on her ankle and to figure out whether it needs rest or whether it needs aggressive treatment. But I know that she'll be watching this game and feeling fairly frustrated, almost as frustrated as Sherelle McMahon. What a great position for Norma Plummer to be in. She's been able to play you know, all four shooters across the course of this two-test series against England, yet she's got players like Cox and McMahon waiting in the wings, busting to get on. The Australians have gradually built this lead now. They're out to a nine-goal lead, but they actually haven't been behind at any stage of this match. So it's impressive that they've been able to build and build and build and get themselves into the game. And this is Susan Bratley. She's been the standout shooter on, of the match. That's goal number 27 from 33 attempts at 82 per cent. Looks as though she's cemented one of those spots, hasn't she, for uh, at least the next test, depending on whether Catherine Cox comes back and who the other shooter will be. I wonder if Sean McMahon's nervous sitting on the sideline. Shirazzle, are you nervous? <laughs> I'm always nervous, especially <laughs> sitting here on the sidelines. <laughs> Well, it looks like Prattley's got one hand on your bibs. Might be a standoff in the car park on the way out. <laughs> well, Bayman's taken a leaf out of Monty Gerard's book and really putting a body on the line. And that's what you need from a wing defence. It's a tough position to get a lot of ball in. You've got to be prepared to go in hard. Speaking of which... Another stat for Rebecca Bully. She's had an impressive game. Seven rebounds, two intercepts, only 11 penalties. The most economical of the Australian defensive line when it comes to the whistle. She hasn't drawn a lot of it yet. She's got won a lot of ball back. not getting any better. Interestingly, Louisa Brownfield shot eight from eight in that third quarter when England started to look a bit comfortable, but Bianca Chatfield has stepped up a defensive pressure and shot, and, Bian and Louisa Brownfield has shot none from five in this quarter. Probably sums up England's night. We've been fairly critical of the 62% uh, shooting ratio, but you're right, we have to play a lot of it. credit to the Australian defence. Bianca Chatfield's played 35 tests, a lot of experience, she looks really comfortable, but 
as you said, Rebecca Bully, it's only a second test for Australia, and she's been sensational tonight. Luke, you'll go a long way if you keep saying nice things about defenders. <laughs> Oh, well, Joe Harton prepared to take Rebecca Bully on for her 10th shot. Even though Joe Harton is only shooting at 67%, I've been impressed by the fact that she's been prepared to go to the post in the face of some fairly impressive defensive work from the Australians. She's not scared to go there. Even though she hasn't been incredibly accurate, she's prepared to put the ball up, and that's what a coach will want. What a great goal for Kate Beveridge to finish on it. Nearly brings Snow. Australia. Again, 